Thanks, Jace. Welcome to Speakeasy with Jace. So I didn't know if I'd be on today because, uh, in case you didn't hear, I had a bike accident. Really not much of an accident. I hit my leg onto a stump that was sticking out of the wall, and I broke my like shin bone, the weight-bearing bone in your lower leg. So here's what it looks like if you have a queasy stomach. Turn away real quick, but I'll just show you this is my leg. So that's, yeah. That thing is heavy. And I really don't like it. And you know how people talk about, oh, there's all these breakthroughs when you have these things happen. I'll tell you what, it just stinks. Like, I'm, I don't like it. <laughs> it's heavy. When I stand up, it pulls because it's mounted into the bone. But it pulls on my shin. And then they also had to mount it so that, you know, here's where I broke my leg. Um, here, right, the shin bone. So to immobilize the leg, what they had to do is they had to get the swelling to go down. So they had to immobilize the leg. Um, and so they put a, a screw in it, and then they mounted that there, and then they mounted this one up here in my thigh. You know, my thigh wasn't involved in the accident, but <laughs> it's had to get involved now so they could put these, look at these freaking things. They're like titanium or something, right? And they weigh a ton. So, yeah, no fun. But it does fit in with what I want to talk about today. So, you know, anyway, to wrap that thought, though, you know, people are like, oh, there's these breakthroughs and that I don't have that yet. So I'm sure it's coming and, and it will show up. But right now I'm just like, uh, and, and I've noticed my self-talk has been negative because I'm like, this just sucks and it hurts and I cry. And um, it just kind of does. But I think that's okay. And I think, and I'm grateful that no one in my life has tried to fix it and be like, there's nothing to fix. It just happened and it sucked. And like my friend Matt, who was with me, said it so nice. He's like, man, I think you're just going to have a long recovery and it's going to suck for a while. And I think that's what it is. And then it will get better and we'll get through it. So Iron Man, yeah, right? So um, uh, someone just put it in that comment. So anyway, that's, that's where it is with the leg. I have surgery on Monday and then, um, and then uh, we'll go from there. So and then I get to finally start like working on recovering. I will tell you this though, every time I rode my bike to a pub with Napa, every time I went to the park, every, all of that, uh, I just wish I'd done more of it now, gotten out and moved more. And I, I am uh, grateful for and appreciative of being able to move and getting back to that space. Like if there's a breakthrough, that's going to be it. So uh, here's what I want to talk about today is the power being forced. And it came out of dealing with this thing. So what I'm talking about is I've been thinking for a while that I want to get other people trained up to do presentations for me uh, for multiple reasons. One is to scale. Two is to touch more people. Three, I don't want to have to travel. Uh, four, it just fits that if I'm teaching people how to be world class and rock a stage, well, then why don't I teach them how to rock a stage using a presentation I've written and then they can get out there and rock stages practicing my stuff so that when they decide to do their things, they'll be really great. That's kind of the model I took uh, when I was learning. So, uh, but I haven't done anything about it. So I'm supposed to have a speaking gig that was today, tomorrow, and the next day in South Carolina. And obviously I'm not going, you know, I, it hurts for me to stand up for just a couple of moments. It really hurts. So um, I had to have someone fill in. So Kevin is filling in. And while I didn't have all the structures in place and all the training for him, um, you know, God just kind of orchestrates things sometimes. What I was going to do at this event is I was going to do laser coaching on people speaking and how they walk, they talk, how they take the stage, their scripting. And coincidentally, Kevin had just said that's one of his favorite things to do in the world is to speaker coach like that. And um, so I noticed that. And then when I hurt my leg, I was like, this is perfect. I'm in a laser coach and it's Kevin's favorite thing in the world. I'll just have Kevin fill in. So right now, Kevin's in Charleston, South Carolina, speaking on my behalf. And so now that I've done it and I'm not there, I miss the group. I want to be clear. Um, it's the Mastermind Inspector community. I love them. They're my favorite stage, my favorite community, my favorite speaking gig ever. And it's like, oh, I miss, I'm sad now. I miss my friends there. And so that part sucks, missing them. And Kevin's there. And knowing that he's going to fill in and everything will be all right, it has reignited me. And now that I've had to do it the first time, it makes me say, okay, how many more people – or how many more stages can we open up? How many more people can we impact? Now that I have let go of me having to be the speaker, how many more speakers can we get out there? So 
talking about forcing is I was quasi forced into this position. And so it got me thinking about being forced in life. And I have been blessed and lucky enough to um, be forced in multiple positions and it's made all the difference. And then I think what's made the other difference, well, it's made like half the difference. And then I think what's made the other half of the difference is I've learned to put myself in position of voluntarily having to sink or swim, i.e. being forced. So let me tell you what I mean. So I had taken a, a seminar back in 2002 about how to do the hypnosis stage show and uh, how to be a speaker. And I had no intention of doing either one. Um, my friend AJ said, if you learn how to do the show, you get girls. And I said, I'll do the show. So <laughs> that seminar I did was like July 4th weekend. I'm back in Orlando and I'm hanging out with um, – with these guys that, that lived in this duplex that I owned, but they were friends of mine. And we, we learned to act as if, which is like walk and talk and speak and act as if you're who you want to be. So um, I appreciate all these likes, guys. Thank you so much. So I'm acting as if, and I'm talking to my friend Jade, who was the bartender for Sligapores. No, he was the DJ for Sligapores, which was the hottest nightclub in Orlando at the time. And then his two roommates, one of them was the head bartender for Sligapores, and the other one was the bar manager for Slingapores. So I'm telling these guys, I am a great stage hypnotist. I'm hysterical and amazing and so funny. And I remember them looking at me and going, hmm, really? Okay. So um, that's a Tuesday night. I get a call on Thursday, and it's one of Jade's roommates. And, and he goes, Jace. I go, yeah. And he goes, hey, dude, we set you up. You're on for a show Sunday night. We'll see you there. We'll do the promotions. Just get ready to rock. He hangs up. And I'm like, well, I, I didn't really mean it. I didn't say this. Obviously, he had hung up, but I'm thinking to myself, I was just acting as if. I didn't really mean it. <laughs> and so now it's Thursday. I'm on for Sunday night, and I have a choice. You know, my, my choices are back out, which I did not want to do and lose face or friends, which there's a key. There is power in peer pressure. Positive peer pressure in the right community has a ton of power because I didn't want to back out in front of them. And then a part of me secretly wanted to do the show and see how it goes. And then, so my, so my first option is back out. My second option is do the show and bomb. Or my third option is do the show and rock it. And I chose the third option. And when I say forced, what I mean was, if I had been waiting for me to schedule a show, I don't know if I ever would have. But these guys called up out of the blue and said, you're on for Sunday night. I mean, maybe when I was talking to them, like, we should do a show, but I was just talking S. You know what I mean? Like, I wasn't really serious. And, um, and so then, uh, <laughs> so I, I had a videotape of one of my mentors doing a hypnosis show, and this is back in the days of VCRs. So I put that thing in there, and I played it, and I typed out every single word in the show. It's single space, probably 30-something pages. And then back then, we didn't have iPhones and all that stuff. We had little tape decks, like a Walkman. So I bought uh, a Walkman, but I made sure it had auto reverse because I read into the Walkman every single line from that script I typed out. And then I played it. And everywhere I went, I listened to the show over and over and over. And it would auto reverse. And I got the auto reverse so that while I was sleeping, I could listen to it. And it would play in my brain over and over and over. And by the way, what you're listening to when you're sleeping goes into your brain. And I know this because um, there are some hypnosis things I've listened to where at the end it goes one, two, three, wide awake, and I'll be sleeping and it'll go one, two, three, wide awake. I wake up and I'm like, oh crap, that CD must have ended. So just side note, what you listen to, all of it goes in. So, so I listened to that thing over and over and over. I spoke along with it. And then I'd sit there and I'd do every line, every line, every line, every line. And then what I did that was the, to me, the funniest part is I then took the script and every like paragraph, I stripped it back to the first sentence and made it really bold and spaced it a couple inches. And I printed this up and it became like a teleprompter. And so I never forget, I had my friend Bobby sit in the front row center because I was on a stage. And so he's sitting right here and he'd flip the page and hold it oriented so that I could read it if I needed to. And he'd move his finger down the page as I went through the show tracking where I was so that if I got lost, I could get back on track again. So, and I remember one time I got lost and I looked, saw where I was, boom, back on. So I went up rocking that show. It was hysterical. I had a lot of fun. People in the audience had fun. Um, people that 
it just changed a lot of dynamics for me. Like as a speaker, I realized the power of being on stage because people I was trying to talk to ahead of time were like, blow me off after the show. They're like, want my autograph. It, was, it, it showed me there's a dynamic when you speak, right? So that's one of the times I was forced. Um, in the vein of me becoming a speaker, a second time I was forced is, well, because I did that show, I had a mentor, he, had a, he would teach how to do the hypnosis show for people and his company was really rocking at the time and they wanted speakers and coaches, but I was one of the very few people that ever did the show, right? And I did it because I was quote unquote forced. So, um, sorry, if I get slow at times, guys, I'm on medicine right now. I think right now I'm on a, I don't know, something pretty good though. Nothing like crazy, crazy good though. I'm, I'm I haven't taken the really strong stuff unless, unless I've been like in agony. I've been trying to like keep that down. Anyway, so I did the show. I became a coach for this guy and I wanted to speak and I wanted my big break. And so I, I had an opportunity, you know, and, and the whole way I had to say yes, 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 yes to all these opportunities. But here's one of the forced moments. And it was, I had just spoken the night before in Orlando, Florida, and then flown back co cross country to Vegas. And I'm having lunch and he goes, you know, you did pretty good last night. I'm supposed to speak tonight for 500 people. Let's have you fill in and see how you do on a real stage. <laughs> so on just a couple of hours notice, I go from I'm having lunch to I'm going to have to be on stage performing for 500 people. <laughs> Which now it's hysterical. You know, the moment, I think I was so in the moment that it was like, like, but so in the moment of like, that I didn't even realize what a big deal it was. And here's a real blessing. And I don't know how you can orchestrate this in your life. And I invite you to if you can. And the blessing was, um, I had very little time to think about it. Once I said yes, that I would fill in, and this is my big break. It was just a couple of hours between that and when I needed to be there in my suit, ready to go on stage and do my pre-show warm up and walk through. So I didn't have time to really think. I had to leave lunch, go home, shower. Keep in mind, guys, I just performed the night before in Orlando and then flown back and we probably went out for drinks after and, you know, and then flew back cross country that morning. So I needed a shower and I needed to get ready. I needed to iron my you know, shirt, make sure my suit looked good, all that stuff. So and they get in touch with my tech crew, my person who would run sound and help catch people when I laid them out. So the blessing of being forced with little time is I didn't have enough time to freak out about it and think about it. And I wound up taking the stage that night and I rocked the stage. Thank you, God. And things just worked out great. And I look back at some of those moments in my life and I realize what a blessing being forced to make a change is. So like while this, this leg thing stinks and it hurts, um, you know, uh, it's going to force me to do some things different. So for instance, I've been really putting a lot of intention and intention on my internet marketing and we have an event coming up end of October. Well, this is going to force me to really up my game and do more webinars and, and virtual promotions because I'm not going to be able to travel to as many events. So I will simultaneously be training up, sorry, someone just walked in the door. It's kind of distracting. I will simultaneously be training up other people to go do presentations for me. And I'll be turning up my internet marketing because I have been forced to do it. So I hope this idea, this message helps you today, you guys. Um, if you have any questions on speaking head game, we're here every Tuesday um, from, uh, what are we, what is it? Noon mountain time for an hour, not an hour, but noon mountain time on speak easy with Jace. And then normally I go live from my business page. So please go to facebook.com forward slash speak easy with Jace and like the page. So you'll be notified when I go live. Cause normally I go live from my business page and uh, it's over there. So anybody have any, I'm going to check the comments. Wow. Look at all these comments. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, I'll break this. This is great. And by the way, I've never had so many like mashing of the like button stuff. Thank you guys. You guys rock. Uh, by, the, by the way, um, you know, Ronan says, what do you mean? Create team side note, unrelated yet related talking about being forced and trained. So a couple years ago, I was kind of drifting. Maybe it was 2012 and 
I called a friend, Scott, and we just happened to reunite through these weird circumstances. Like he was working with a person that had been a client of mine. And so we reunited and um, Scott and I had gone through all these landmark seminars together. And he's like, I think you should repeat this course called power to create. And I'm like, all right. And I did it back in like 2007, 2000, no four, but I don't think I'd really paid attention to it. I was just going cause I bought it. And so it just so happens to be in Las Vegas and they never offer this course in Las Vegas. And they did it in Vegas because a bunch of people from Panda Express's management team were going to go through. So like 95% of people there work for Panda. So it just so happens to be coming up in Vegas and I don't have the money to go to it. And I thought Scott got me comped, but I found out later that Scott paid my way. And um, it's touching, right? It's beautiful. And sometimes God just lines stuff up that, that I wound up going to power to create again. And I wanted to do their advanced program, which was a year long program. Cause I knew like weekend seminars just weren't going to cut it anymore. So I want to hang on. So I have to embarrass her real quick. Mom, come say hi. Hey guys, this is my mom, Diane. Sorry, I'm trying to be quiet. Yeah, I'm having people say hi to you. She's, she's visiting from, can you scoot this way a little bit more? Oh. She's visiting from Orlando, Florida, and she has been just amazing. Yeah. Anything you want to say to everybody in the Facebook world? Yes, send him lots of good healing <laughs> prayers and love. <laughs> yes, please do. Anything else? No, and then I'm Napa. Glad we're all here together. Cool. Yeah, and I'll wrap this. If you didn't see my post on Facebook, when I finish this live, I'll tell you guys a story about Napa and like reason one million two why I love Boise. All right, so back into the thing. I wanted to do this year long program, but I didn't have the money, and I found someone to put the down payment for me. And before the program technically even started, because I was in the space of creating team, the, the program was called the Team Management Leadership Program. Because I was in the space of creating team and teamwork, I created a business relationship with a gentleman that paid for that course, that paid for my travel, and has resulted in hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of revenue. Uh, and more importantly, we've helped a ton of people. And it came from, I think, the right opportunity, the right training, and saying yes, like just that sometimes things unfold perfectly in the right way. So the reason I bring that back down to here, I've been looking at what makes what has made my business succeed and what's been going on recently and how blessed and happy I am and some of the great things that are happening. And I realize trainings that I did back in 12, 2012, 13, 14, I did this team management leadership program. Some of it just frankly stunk. Like it was no fun at all. Like having people not get in your face in a mean way, but call me out when things broke down to really call out my lack of effective communication to, have to clean it up every time I broke my word to someone um, to really get nitty gritty and details and planning. Like it was just some of it, ugh. but it's the stuff that now is allowing me to get ahead. And it just, you guys, there's some power to training. It might not have a return for you that month, but there is a power to training that training shortens the amount of time, money, energy that you have to put into stuff later. So yeah. So I, I'm just so grateful I did that stuff now. Um, like this device. When we ignore the nudge, we get the two by four. Yes, when we ignore the nudge, we get. The, it is much better. You guys are always going to take a seminar. You're either going to take a seminar by your choice that you pay for in your time, or life will give you a seminar. And life is always much more expensive seminar. Cool. Uh, what are some of my best self hypnosis CD recommendations? Natalie, I don't have any. Um. I have some hypnosis stuff I made. If you want one, message me and I'll find it and send it to you. I, I, so I have a background in hypnosis. I've developed some methodologies, but I, I'm not really in the hypnosis scene. And what I want to say is I believe that guided imagery, just where people like say, hey, breathe, close your eyes, and they have you imagine whatever you're swimming, and then you're in space, and then you're loving yourself, whatever it is. I think all of that stuff is super effective. So I would say go for the one that works best for you. Now, what I used to do when I was really going through a big life transition, I would record customized hypnosis CDs. So I'd record one for myself with all the things I wanted to let go of and who I wanted to become. Other people, I'd interview them and create it just for them so it would have their name in it. So I think the most powerful one would be one you do for yourself, about yourself, and what you want. 
having said all that, I just I think there's a ton of good ones out there. John Asaraf has some good ones. Um, just find someone you like I, who hopefully doesn't talk like this. And now, breathe deeply. Oh, I can't stand that. Hey, ooh. Just someone who's normal, right? <laughs> and we'll program you with what you want. Um, awesome, awesome. Guys, this is so nice seeing all you guys tune in. Thank you so much. So if you think this stream will... Um, benefit someone in your life, do me a favor, please like and share if you think it's appropriate. If you don't, totally understand it. Um, but if you do, we really want to help more people. And end of October, we're going to have an event coming up. And I'll just put it this way. We have been selling tickets to this event for a thousand bucks and I'm going to have them available at over a 50% discount. I'm not going to tell you how much of a discount, but we're going to make it make prime day look like nothing. So uh, thanks, you guys. I'm Andy, hi, my old friend from Vegas. Praying, thanks, man. I appreciate it. So uh, I'll leave you with this story, reason 1 million two why I love Boise. By the way, this isn't my hairstyle. This is just for me going, ah, when my pain hurts. <laughs> um, so last night, you know, Napa has been cooped up in the house, and he just wants to play, play, play usually, and, and the poor guy has just been cooped up here. So I have a dear friend, Becky, and a lot of times Becky and I will meet and we'll ride our bikes together somewhere and get a beer and Napa will run next to us or whatever. So uh, Becky uh, has some dogs and so she was going to take her dogs to this place, Handlebar, last night, which is a very dog-friendly pub here in Boise. And she's like, do you want me to take Napa? So I was like, yeah. So she took Napa. So literally last night, my dog is at the bar without me. <laughs> I'm home laid up in bed and my dog's at the bar. I just think it's hysterical, but it's great because it's uh this one place is super dog friendly. They can go off leash and Napa will walk around the entire room and say hi to everybody and get petted and look at them and make them think they're the most amazing human being in the entire world. And then he won't stay too long and he'll move around and then he'll come back and loop through again. It's the funniest thing. So, all right, guys, thanks for tuning in. I love you guys. Um, you know, I don't know what the big blessing on the other side of this leg is, but It'll be there eventually, but I, from behalf of my leg, bye, and me, I love you guys. Thanks for tuning in.